Hello and welcome back to Chasing Green Arrows. Today we'll be doing the play readings for Manchester United versus Wolves. A typical Fergie time winner for United, uh, courtesy Marcus Rashford and a wicked uh, deflection. I have with me my co-host Zohar Khan. How are you doing, bro? I'm good, man. I'm happy, man. Nice to see De Gea get a clean sheet. Nice to see Marcus get a goal. And of course, bro, I can close my eyes and tell you there's going to be either a Bruno goal or an assist. My man bagged an assist at the end of the game. But uh, real talk, man, this was a this was a really cagey game. It was a very interesting game. I, you know, hats off to Wolves. They're missing a lot of players. So they're playing a lot of kids. But it was pretty even for most of the game, man. And I mean, a point would have been very fair. A point would have been very fair. But um, yeah, man, thank God for Marcus scoring that uh, that, that that Fergie time vintage classic. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man. What, what did you think? Your boy Nuno was uh, was cooking something. He was cooking, cooking, but he forgot bro. to close the stove. <laughs> bro, 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 bro. Why are you doing Nuno dirty like that, man? <laughs> listen, listen. I, you, honestly, I have to hand it to Nuno, bro. For the team he put out today, the way he set them up. And, like, there were a lot of younger players, a lot of fringe players. You know, obviously... Bro, two uh, Premier League starts, um, uh, I think, in the, in the midfield. Uh, I mean, one was Hoiver and the, the yeah. wing. The winger, and then in the midfield, I think uh, it was Vitinha. Vitinha. Yeah, yeah, bro. Vitinha, Vitinha. Um, you know, credit to him. He's finding players, like, uh, left, right, and center. No, even, even Fabio Silva, bro. Fabio Silva's, like, 18. He's from their academy. He's a kid, man. Yeah, he's that's a kid, the thing. bro. Uh, I mean, like, he needs Jimenez there in the team. I think he'll grow like that. But right now, yeah, there's too much pressure on him. But he has a lot of potential. Uh, but I, I felt actually... Um, um, uh, do you know these teams actually uh, they're neck and neck and uh, I don't think United have ever beaten them uh, since Wolves have been promoted to the Premier League and it's been only five goals in seven games so it's a very tight uh, kind of it's always fixture. a tight fixture I mean yeah. I think like the last three games before this one we drew with them it was usually like a 1-1 draw something yeah. like that so even this this was pretty much you know on on course for the same thing and we just got lucky with that goal at the end bro yeah and honestly credit to Nuno Nuno like you said he's missed a few players uh, Jimenez because of injury uh, then the likes of Doherty and Jota have left the club exactly. so uh, and now he's like you know he's learning uh, and he's figuring it out like you know he's not giving up he's not like okay fine I'm, I don't have my best players and then Jimenez gone as well forget it I can't do anything it's not like that he's like you know trying to work out uh, and he's he's producing results like yes he, sure. he was really unlucky today. Uh, against Tottenham, they could have bagged a winner in the end. It was Fabio Silva again could have scored. Uh, they, they got a result against Chelsea. So, like, you know, they're grinding it out. Uh, they've been unlucky, but maybe in a few games, luck will be on their side and you'll see them uh, go up the table. For sure, for sure, man. It's, it's definitely been like that. I mean, and you, you even got to say, man, Traore has been pretty off this entire season. You know, like, he's been, hasn't yeah. really been the same player that he was last season. I think it's been, like, about a year since he scored last. So, he's, like, there's been a lot of, like, like you said, you know, some key players leaving. Um, you know, injuries have really hurt them. They're missing some guys. It's just, he, he's really doing, he's, he, man, Nuno's always punched above his weight, always punched above his weight. And even this season, I think he's punching above his weight. He's just, you know, had a really rough, uh, you know, luck of the draw, basically. Yeah, no, 100%. I completely agree with you. Uh, with that, let's go into the play reading. So we'll start with Bulls, uh, if you don't mind. Yeah, I got you, man. Let's go. Let's go. So, uh, Rui Re- Patricio in goal. Uh, some decent saves, especially that save of Fernandez. It went, came straight at him, but it was a good reaction save. Honestly, man, Rui Patricio is a solid keeper. I've been following him for a long time because he's Portugal's number one as well. I don't know if he's still their number one, but uh, back in the day he was. And he's good from penalties. That's what I remember him for mainly. He's just good overall. He's a solid keeper, good IQ. Um, and, you know, like you said, man, you called it. That save against Bruno was fantastic. That was just pure reaction. Lovely ball floated in from Mason. Beautiful touch from Bruno to, 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 mm. to you know, uh, to get that shot off. And yeah, man, he just, he, he did what he had to do. He had a good save again from, from, from that uh, Paul effort from outside the box as yeah, well. That was a good He's save. a good keeper. I mean, you know, he couldn't do anything for the second, for, for the goal. That deflection really took him out of the picture. I don't know if he would have gotten it if it didn't take the deflection, but, you know, we can only go off what, what actually happened. If there's like one criticism I can make, man, I feel like his passing out of the back could have been better. Hmm. Maybe that's because of the players that he was, you know, passing to the system that they were playing. But, you know, you want a little bit more there. And he did eat a yellow for time wasting. Yeah. Which was really random because it was like the 70th minute. 70th minute, yeah. Like you, you could tell there. That there and then that they're going for the draw. That's uh, it, you know, shutting it, up shop. Yeah. So um, uh, what was your rating for him? Um, I'm, I'd give him a six and a half today, man. Six and a half out of ten for Patricio. Uh, yeah, fair enough. And then moving on to Cody. Uh, was solid at the back and uh, he was guiding the youngsters. You could see that he was using his experience. Uh, played pretty well. I don't know, man. I disagree. I thought Cody was trash today. Yeah? Yeah, man. I didn't like Cody's game. I think Cody really struggled. I thought Cody, he got, he, he like, he struggled with the United States pace all game. Marcus beat him a few times. He was pretty much 
like that weak spot in the Spurs and uh, the Spurs, the Wolves, the, the Wolves back three. I don't know if the back playing in the back three doesn't suit him, but you know, he, 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 he didn't really like get to the ball as much as he should have. It wasn't, I didn't find it, find it was a commanding performance from him, even though he is the senior player there. Yeah. Um, you know, sure. Maybe he was, you know, like I said, you know, he had a lot of youth to deal with a lot of young, uh, a lot of young players, but you would yeah. think that, you know, this would have been a known commodity. Uh, man, I got to rate him low. I gave him a five and a half. Man. Five and a half. Uh, okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, I thought, uh, to be honest with you, uh, I, I didn't see him make it too many mistakes. Uh, he got skinned a bit, but I think uh, his communication with Hoiver was uh, really good. Uh, if you pronou- I don't know how you pronounce his name, but yeah, uh, basically the winger. Uh, yeah, was, yeah, 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 his, back yeah, wing back, yeah. So he was, uh, I think his communication with him was good, but yeah, like, I mean, fair enough. Uh, you, uh, I this think is what rash- I think. Yeah, no, this that, is what I think. That, that's fair enough, that's fair enough. And then Roman says getting close, uh, almost scored a couple of times, hit the bar as well. The flick on crazy, crazy save uh, from Tegea. Uh, and then crazy. he was, uh, I don't know what you think, but he was pretty good at the back as well. I thought he was great, man. I thought he was the best uh, part of um, the Wolves' back line. He was one of their, he was one of the best players on the pitch tonight. 100%, um, yeah. He definitely brought like two big, big chances he had uh, from from set pieces. There was the one that came off the woodwork, the one, the flick that you said that, you know, that De Gea got to. Outstanding defensively, bro. Outstanding defensively. 12 clearances, bro. This guy was everywhere. And even last game, bro, uh, I forget exactly who they were playing. Do you against Spurs, he scored the goal. He scored the goal against Spurs. Yeah. Again, bro, the, he's just so good. And he's a big dude. He's six foot three. You know, I'm surprised yeah. that I didn't really know about him, but he's been playing. He didn't. Uh, well. The thing is, he started off the season with a bang. He was scoring goals. He was in my fantasy team. But then he didn't play for, like, a long time. Okay. Uh, I think it was a mixture of injury and also just benching him. I don't think uh, right, right, right. Uh, he was fitting the system. But uh, he's come back with a bang. Come back with a bang. Yes, yeah, so I, I, I'll give him a seven and a half out of ten, man. Seven and a half out of ten for says. Uh, and uh, moving on to Kilman. I like Kilman's game, man. You know, um, I thought he was defensively solid. He shut down Mason well. That yeah. setup that they had, you know, with the back three and the two wing backs, I felt like they really compressed the space that United really likes to play in. Yeah. Nuno, Nuno, Nuno's a smart guy. He knows how United are going to play. He knows that yeah. they're going to try to run to spaces. They're looking for that space to run into. And if you yeah. let them build pace, if you let them counter, they're going to destroy you. So he knew what he was doing and he clogged up all those spaces, clogged up the space in front of Bruno. I thought Max was really good, man. You know, one five out of his six duels, hundred percent tackle rate. You know, just you know, just solid, solid performance. I'll give him a seven out of ten. Seven out of ten, fair enough. Yeah, I think it was a solid performance. Um, and then moving on to Hoiver, I felt that um, I think this was his first Premier League uh, full debut. Uh, I think he was excellent. Uh, your thoughts on his performance? I thought he was really good, man. I thought you know he got forward really, really well. You know, yeah. he's a really good young talent. I mean, he's you know. Uh, they picked them up from Liverpool as part of that uh, Jota, uh, yeah. Jota sale. Yeah. Exactly. My only thing is that I, I feel like he could have gone back to help Cody more. Just like, you know, he was bombing forward. I feel like he could have helped Cody more. Um, and maybe that would have helped Cody play a better game. I felt Cody maybe got a little bit isolated. But yeah, man, I like this game. Unfortunately, there wasn't much of an end result from it. So I'm going to be a little bit harsh over here. So I'll give him a six and a half. Six and a half for whoever. And then uh, moving on, if you want to do the other wing back, uh, Ryan Aitnuri. So, bro, Aitnuri was actually pretty solid for the most part of the game. Again, except. You know, he, except, except, right? So he held his own against Juan Bisaka and Mason. There was a very interesting duel between him and Juan Bisaka. Um, he got forward well, but he lost the ball a ton. And honestly, man, like he was at fault for Marcus's goal. He was yeah. at fault, you know, like he was sitting. I, I get it. You're cramping up. You're hurting. But unfortunately, there's no subs to make. You need to know that there's no subs to make. Yeah. You need to know that all the subs have been made. And if you go down, you're going to be playing with 10 men. And you can't go down and just, like, you know, leave all that space. Because it happened against, I think it was Southampton. He went down, same thing, left space. And then it happened again today. And Marcus was smart to be, hey, to target him. Be like, hey, this guy's injured. This guy's not playing. He's not up to par. Let me go at him and let me make him make a mistake. And that's exactly what happened. He said that as well that's in the post match. I knew that the, he was cramping up, so I attacked him. Exactly. But exactly. yeah, like the thing which I didn't understand was uh, uh, yes, you can get cramped, which is it is unfortunate. It can happen. But the, it, after like a few minutes, he got up and he started running. So, like, you know, he uh, so th- I don't know he, if he was looking for the foul or what it was. I don't know what it was. I but don't know what it was. If he were just trying to stop the play, stop and, the play. And yeah, time, like, yeah. But it really, it really hurt them, man. It really hurt them because he yeah. was on the ground, like you said. And then as soon as Marcus made that run and the ball was but in the danger was very apparent at that point in time you could see him just get up and be like okay i need to run back 
So how much of it was cramp or how much was it him being able to play through it? If he was able to play through it, then why weren't you able to do that from the beginning, right? Yeah. So it asks a lot of questions. And those are questions that honestly, those are things that managers don't want to see because that's a temperament thing. Yeah. You know, you make a mistake, things happen, right? You get yeah. skinned, it's fine. But that's like a temperament. That's like a commitment. That's an effort question. So that really, you know, I like from what was a really good game, you know, it really hurt his performance. I'll give him a six just because, you know, like he was good for, I'd say like, a solid 75 minutes of the game, yeah. then really just uh, you know, kind of pissed yeah. it all away. I think yeah. it, it really made a mess of it at the end, basically. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, I agree with you. Um, there, I think, yeah, that wraps up the defenders and then moving on to Ruben Neves. Man, Ruben Neves is so consistent. He's so good. I know a lot of big teams want to pick him up. Um, you know, he always gets brought up in, in transfer talks. Very good performance in midfield. His passing is always solid. The way he plays is so cerebral. He's young. He's a young guy. He's not. He's not very old. Yeah. But he's he's just a smart player. Does the you know does the simple things well. Has the potential to score screamers. Has the potential to score bangers as well. So he he he's a threat. But at the same time, he's not just you know a flash in the pan sort of player. Um, really was a big part of shutting Bruno down for the most part of the game. If you saw the space that he was occupying, that was yeah. the space that that Bruno likes to be in. And, you know, very smart tactics from Nuno. Again, you know, I'm going to come back to my guy Nuno. And it was just, you know, they knew that United are very dependent on, on, on Bruno creating. So they wanted to limit as much space as possible. Every time Bruno got the ball, you saw how there was always Moutinho closing him out, Neves closing him out. I loved everything about Neves' game today. I gave him a seven and a half, man. Seven and a half out of ten. And the fact that they opted for Portugal, they probably know what Fernandes does. Um, exactly. They played with him in and out of training. So um, they have an idea, I think, uh, compared to other. And the fact that they're like two, three Portuguese, like uh, exactly. teaming up on they him. Know what's up. They, they know what's up. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's a really good point there. So seven and a half for Neves. And then um, Joao Moutinho. I like Moutinho, man. Moutinho is that veteran presence that they have, that sort of like that leader on the pitch, if you will. Um, again, this is someone that's been consistently solid in midfield. He moves the ball forward well. He really does help break the lines of opposition teams. Yeah. Um, his passing range is great, and he really helps close down space as well. Like he's he's someone that's very coachable, that has a very good understanding of what's happening on the pitch. I mentioned it as part of Neves, but again, that Neves Moutinho combination really just limited so much space for Bruno to be uh, to be incisive, to be dangerous, and and you got to hand it to him for for a solid performance. I, you know, I think a seven is on par for him. Yeah, seven for uh, Matinho and uh, Vitinha. The, 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 his full debut. Um, he's only twenty years old. I think he was superb. I thought he was superb. I mean, very, very lively in the first half. Was was at the center of most things, but unfortunately, he faded really badly at the start of the second. Yeah, I mean, he's gonna yeah. learn though. Like uh, he will, he will, he will. Yeah. But I didn't expect him to fade that badly. He got subbed <laughs> off pretty quick. I think it was the fifty-fifth yeah. minute. So just because of that, I mean, if he played longer, I would have given him a higher score. But I think that just because of how much he faded, unfortunately, you can't do that. Um, you know, maybe it's the fixture list. It's a whole bunch of things. Yeah. I'll give him a six and a half. A six and a half. Uh, yeah. And then moving on to uh, Traore, I, I felt uh, he dribbled really well, uh, got into space, but he just couldn't find the end product. 100% end product was missing today. You know, showed flashes of brilliance. He had a couple of plays where he really just, you know, he was unplayable. The one that he skinned uh, Juan Bissaka on, yeah. a couple of runs, a couple of powerful driving runs through the midfield. So when he gets space and time to run, he's so dangerous. And I think Shaw had the correct approach to play him, which is just get the ball away from him right away. But yeah, man, like he's, he's such a strong player, man. He like, I, I think he had something close to like 20, 20, 20, like 50, 50s came out on top in like 10 of them. He's just a strong guy and he's able to hold off guys and he's always a threat in that sense. Plus he's quick as well, but there needs to be more end product from, especially with him and his missing. So because of that, I got, I got to ding points when I got to take points off him. So I'm going to give him a six and a half. Six and a half out of 10 for Traore. And then uh, Pedro Neto. I like Neto. I'm a fan of Neto. I think Neto is a really smart player. He's really hard working as well. Very hard working. He's really stepped up in the absence of Jimenez. You know, like this is something that some, someone needed to step up from, from from Wolves ranks, and this is this is what it was when when Jimenez was playing. Neto was having Neto plays with him so well. So it, almost like you know you didn't miss uh, losing Jota. Um, you know, again, got to save out of the hair, but unfortunately, nothing to show for it. And again, like I said, he's gonna it's he's gonna be so much better when Jimenez comes back because that's yeah. gonna be a much more natural pairing up front than with Traore. I'll give him a seven. A seven for Neto. Um, and for the subs, like um, they both, came, I think Podence and Fabio Silva, like they came on pretty early. Um, but at that time, United were had more possession of the ball. But still, like your thoughts on their performance? 
So yeah, man, like Potence is usually pretty solid uh, for for Wolves, but uh, he didn't really do much after coming on for Vitinha. He had quite a bit of time to make a difference, came on the yeah. 55th, but I didn't think he really had much of an impact on the game. You know, United were definitely controlling it at that point in time, even if there wasn't much end result. And uh, same thing for Silva. Silva, man, he, he's really raw. He's young. Um, yeah, he's, he's going to improve. Yeah. You know, he had a, he had a really good game against Tottenham uh, today. Not so much. Gave the ball away far, far too much. Yeah. Um, so I think for both of them, I'd have to give them a five and a half. Five and a half. Yeah, I think that's fair enough. Um, they, they couldn't go for, get, get forward in the second half as well. So I think that contributed to that. And then uh, just Nuno, uh, very quickly, uh, your thoughts on him? I think Nuno, man, I think Nuno did the best that he could, man. His hands were tied. He didn't really have much, in, you know, he didn't have some, you know, key first names available to him. Had to play with a lot of youth. But again, always tactically astute, always, you know, does his research, does his homework on yeah. the opposition, knows what he wants to do, has a clear system and communicates that well to his players. If he won, it would have, or if they came over with a draw, I would have given him a higher score. But, you know, just because of it is what it is, I'm going to give him a seven. A seven out of ten for no, no. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, that wraps up Wolves' readings. And moving on to Manchester United, David uh, De Gea and Goal. I think this was probably uh, an amazing performance from him. Uh, some really good saves. And then a clean sheet will really boost his confidence. Man, that clean sheet was essential because United have been leaking goals left, right, yeah, and right center. Yeah. Even in our picks, bro, I've never picked United. I rarely pick United to get a clean sheet because yeah. you just know that even if they're going to score at the other and they're going to yeah. score multiple goals yeah. against, you know, when 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 we're on the defensive, they look good. To, they always look like they're going to concede one. But man, five saves in the game, two big ones that save from size, and uh, there was another one that was also solid. You know, he, he he's just been. He had a really good game. That clean sheet is going to be, you know, huge for his confidence. And his distribution from the back was much more confident. If you saw the past couple of days, uh, past couple of games, excuse me, um, you know, it's it's been a little bit hit hit or miss the way we play out from the back. But today was yeah. solid. I'm going to give De Gea, a, a, you know, an eight out of ten. Eight out of ten. Okay. Yeah. And the distribution you mentioned actually that was his like uh, USP, like when he first started for United. Like his distribution was always really good. So that did taper out, like in between, it faded kind of. But uh, I think he's got that back in this, especially in this game. I noticed that as well. Um, but yeah, moving on to Juan Bissaka. I don't think it was his greatest game. Uh, um, I, I think he was attacked quite a bit uh, defensively, and then uh, attacking wise, he didn't provide a threat. Yeah, I mean that's the, that's 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 a pretty fair assessment. And then I think he took up good positions in the final third, but that last ball, the end part, is always lacking from him. Like you can get the ball to him, but it's just you don't like you really know that you're not going to get much from him after that. And yeah, did you notice? Uh, uh, sorry to cut you off, but it's on mm -hmm. this point. If you noticed a couple of times, he was in a really good position, could have crossed it, but he cut it back to Bruno or to Pogba. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's uh, they're your best players, but at the same time, that angle, if you just cross it from there, it could be more productive. Exactly. It's just, like Gary Neville taking... used to do it, you know, like just whip it in and then you never know what That's happens. That's it. He's, he's just taking the safer option. I feel like that's, you know... Um, you know, maybe a confidence thing, but mm. and that's that. That's also going to come down to coaching. Um, he got burned by Adama once or twice, but defensively, I thought he was okay, man. He, you know, made two out of three tackles, got the majority of his duels. He was okay, bro. So yeah. I think uh, I think maybe this might be a bit generous, but I love my guy. I'm going to give him a seven out of ten. Whoa, seven out of ten. Yeah, I seven might have do docked a point, but yeah, seven out of ten. That's fair. Now clean sheet, so uh, you have that. Um, but exactly. then uh, Eric Bay. Uh, Bro, he has moments, uh, mom, like crazy uh, moments, like, you know, careless moments, but his speed was really impressive today. <laughs> Bro, Bai is personally are my favorite out of all our center backs. Yeah. I've said this repeatedly. Unfortunately, you know, uh, he has a mistake in him every time. Bro, his, his, his legs, yeah, no, it's not even he has a mistake in him, bro. His legs are made out of glass. <laughs> um, but, you know, three consecutive starts, that's going to be big for him. That's going to be, you know, a big boost towards his fitness and hopefully he can keep it up and he doesn't get hurt. I thought he was massive at the back. Bro. Four interceptions, 11 recoveries, um, won the majority of his duels. Honestly, he really covers from Maguire's lack of pace because yeah. Lindelof is good, but he's still not the quickest. And if you play him in Maguire, then you, like that that pace deficit from Maguire doesn't get balanced out by what Lindelof brings. But Bai holds his own, and I think it was when Traore was through that he went that Bai really ran across to nick the ball off him because they got kind of pulled out of position. And he's like, okay, so he was covering Maguire first, and then he's like, okay, you know what? I need to run across and switch. And he made a very, very good interception. I like this game, man. Seven and a half. Seven and a half, ten, uh, seven and a half out of ten for Bay, and then his partner uh, Maguire. Maguire was really good today, man. I have to hand it to him. I criticize him a lot, but I thought he had a really good game. Um, the combination of him and Bay really sort of like plays into each of their strengths. 
Uh, Maguire so you can see just... when he has someone who's fast with him uh, and can make up for his uh, slowness. Exactly. Or, uh, like he 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 does provide uh, some solidity. Exactly, in the exactly. Because then basically, like he he gets to play his game and he gets to do what he does best. His passing out of the back was very clean today. It was accurate with with his long balls, which is very important for the way United play. Because when they look to hit on the counter, they need to bypass the opposition midfield, right? And uh, that's something that really helped with the way that Maguire was playing. Um, no, no complaints about his performance today. But seven and a half. Seven and a half uh, for Maguire, and then Alex Ellis. Uh, I thought he was moving forward. Uh, he, he was in that final third, but suddenly he was taken off. Was that injury? Or I don't know what it was, but uh, he was suddenly. W- were you surprised with that substitution at half time? You know, honestly, I wasn't that surprised because um, he put in definitely put in some decent crosses trying to pick out Cavani. Yeah. But I felt like you know, like we almost became a little bit too dependent on that on that sort of style of play to just cross it into Cavani, and there wasn't enough link up play happening. But uh, I think he was subbed off at halftime because he just couldn't deal with uh, Hoover and Traore. Uh, back, I think uh, I, th- I, I, I think yeah, I think he I think he couldn't handle that part of it. And um, uh, you know, like like you said, you know, part of you know we, we talked about how. Uh, Hoover was really good getting forward, and Traore was was dangerous. And part of that is because Tellers wasn't able to handle that threat. So mm. um, he got subbed at halftime. I thought Shaw played well when he came on and really yeah. showed the different aspects of each of each of their games. So for me, this was a poor performance for Alex Tellers. I got to give him a six out of ten. Six out of ten for Tellers. Um, Pogba. And uh, actually, let's go Matic first. I think Matic was uh, superb today. Uh, uh, you know, he's brought in for this kind of job, like you know, uh, holding that midfield together. Yes, on the counter, sometimes they were going past him, but apart from that, he was pretty solid. I love Matic's game today, bro. Matic was fantastic. Just, just he he, he brings a different uh, dimension to the game than you would get with sort of with Fred or with Scott. I thought he really, you know played his position well, broke up attacks, brought the ball forward. He's very calm on the ball as well. He's very composed and he, he he can play a pass. He has the ability to play a pass. When he was younger, he used to play further up the field. So he has that part of it in his game. And uh, we got to see some of it. Again, his passing range, excellent, excellent. Um, I was really happy with him. I gave him an 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10 for Matic. It was glimpses of like that Matic in prime. Like, uh, of exactly. Course, I think Basically age, Chelsea Matic. Chelsea Matic. I, I think he's not getting that consistency maybe because of age or I don't know what it is, but... Uh, Today we saw like what, what what his potential is, and if he can play like this day in day out, man, number twenty one might come, bro. But <laughs> but that's the thing you you want this in the big games as well, right? Like when you're Absolutely. playing the likes of Liverpool, and I, that's the thing we haven't seen Matic do this uh, in day in and day out as in a United shirt. But exactly, I think that's what uh, that's why he was signed. Uh, and then moving on to Paul Pogba, bro, I was very impressed with Pogba's game today. I thought he played very disciplined. He held his ground in the middle of the park. Yeah, you know, usually, you know, Pogba has sometimes has this tendency to go, you know, go down easy. He loses the ball, but I thought he was very disciplined today. Mm. He consistently carried the ball forward well, passes well. You know, obviously that's something we know, but yeah, he's just he's so strong that he's able to hold off defenders. He's able to get a shot away from you know positions where you wouldn't think that he would be able to. Um, I you know was very happy, and if we can get more of this, more of this Pogba, mm. you know, honestly, a lot of there's you know there's a lot of talk that he's going to leave in the summer, so he might just be playing like this to boost his transfer value and make him a better option for other teams. So who knows, bro? If it, if, if it helps us win, win some trophies, so be it, man. I'm, if you want to play for yourself, but it's benefiting us, I'm okay with that. I'll give him the seven and a half. Seven and a half out of ten. I think since the, his agent announced that he's bouncing, uh, he's been playing decent, man. He's got a goal as well. He's, and um, I honestly love him. I think he's an amazing player. But it's just unfortunate he's not... Uh, Gelling, it hasn't really worked out. Yeah, it's not working, but you can see some moments. Uh, I think uh, today in the first half, he was a bit uh slow, but second half, he was way more creative. Uh, he did his job more defensively. I think in the first half, second half, he was much more creative and he was getting those attacks going. So uh, you can tell that this guy's a world class player. He just, I don't know what it is, man. He just like, uh, we just have to hope it clicks. Uh, that's it. And then uh, moving on, Bruno Fernandez, I think he had a very Poor game, missed a chance, and then just unlocks the defense in one shot, man. And that's why he's at Old Trafford. That's why they bought him. That's why they bought him. But this guy has been, I mean, if he continues at the rate that he's been going, I think he's going to be one of the best signings the Premier League has ever seen. Wow. These Chelsea men talking about Werner <laughs> and Hubbards. And, bro, get out of here. Go sit your, go sit your 100 million bro, but, you're, on the bench. But, but with that statement, you're, uh, I mean, to, uh, like comparing with Ronaldo as well. <laughs> let it be. Let it be compared with Ronaldo, bro. Let, him, let them compare. Let them compare him with KDB. No, I don't care. <laughs> but right now, he's one of the best players in the league. You he's can't deny that. It. Yeah, he's you can't deny it, bro. that. Bro, I was reading this comment and basically they're like, 
the only thing that are guaranteed in life are death, taxes, and a Bruno Gold involvement. <laughs> and I was like, yo, that's 100%, man, 100%. Yeah. And even today, like you said, bro, it was a poor game. He yeah. really wasn't able to play. Uh, I keep on saying Spurs, man. Wolves really, like, held him, man. They, they, they really, like, took him out of the game for large chunks of it. But still, man, four chances created, even though they were trying to shut him down. A lot of sloppy play as well. But that's part of this game, you know? Like, he's going to give the ball away because he's always going to try the risky pass. He's always going to try the Do you think that's the, the difference, option. though? Do you think that's the difference between him and Pogba? Like, they're both extremely talented, but uh, it's a matter of, like, like character. Like, uh, Bruno just, like, he, do- he doesn't give up. He just wants to keep going. Like, Pogba, if he's having a... He's a, more of a confidence player. If, uh, he is. He is. Like, 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 if I put it I that way. Like, like, yeah, I feel like Pogba is a little bit, like, carefree. You know, like, he's dirty. Pogba is, like, a vibes player, you know? Yeah. But, but Bruno, bro, Bruno gets upset. Bruno, Bruno's raging, and I like yeah. that. I like that commitment. Yeah. Like, let's put it this way. Bruno Fernandez is a Roy Keane type of player. Yeah. More mentally yeah. strong, I guess. I think that's what it is. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So, you know, he had a glorious chance from that Mason cross. I feel like, you know, should've that should have been a goal. Should have finished it. It's straight nothing, at the keeper, man. But, you know, nothing else he could have done, you know? He did a really good job from the angle that he had. It was yeah. just Rui Patricio was up for it. Um, so even though it was a poor game, honestly, the way he brought it back with that assist to Marcus, bro, what a pass from where, bro, from where inside, inside our own half, Unbelievable. I, I'll give him a seven and a half. That's accounting for him having a poor game. Seven and a half out of 10. And this is why United are in the top four. It's because of this guy, man. He unlocks defenses in, in a blink of an eye. So yeah, I think, um. Uh... Seven and a half out of ten is fair enough. And then Mason Greenwood uh, could have had an assist, but apart from that, not too much uh, involvement. I think Wolves uh, handled him pretty well. Uh, your thoughts on his performance? Yeah, man, I think Wolves handled him well. And then on the other side, you know, I feel like he's kind of short on confidence. He's almost trying too hard, you know. Like, he, he, he really wants to get on the score sheet. He really wants to, like, you know, prove his worth. And especially after the season that he had last season, there's a lot of pressure. And, and, I, and I knew this would happen because he's a young player. He needs time. He's going to go with his ups and downs while he builds his game, while he builds his confidence. Plus, he's playing out wide, which isn't his natural position. Lovely cross for Bruno that just floated it in at the far post. But apart from that, not really much going on. Man, lost out the ball a bunch. No shots to speak of either. Wolves crowded him out. Played him really, really well. I'll give him a six and a half. Six and a half out of ten for Greenwood. And then uh, moving on to uh, Edison Cavani. So part of it was that United couldn't really get him involved. And, you know, a lot of it was also just, uh, you know. And like you very... said, the three set at the back, they just narrowed down on him. Like it was no-no exactly, tactics, exactly. which like uh, kind of suffocated Cavani. And, bro, you have Roman Saiz as your, as your, as your middle center back. It's a big dude. That can, that's someone that can handle uh, Cavani Come one-on-one, on, yeah. right? Um, but it, honestly, like this game kind of showed – by you know by the way we played without tony on the pitch what tony brings to our to our game you know i think he adds a dimension that is very important and very underlooked and i know the liverpool guys are gonna uh you know come at me for this but you know he he he, he like just how we talk about for me and you they say that for me knows his game is more than goals i think tony's game is more than goals man and um i you know coming back to cavani he definitely adds that aerial dimension but just couldn't get uh, couldn't get involved he had a chance from the rebound from that bruno shot didn't really work out a couple of set pieces that we could have uh, you could have had a better uh, you know bite at but didn't really work out six and a half out of ten six and a half out of ten for Cavani and then Marcus Rashford I think I thought you looked tired like during the game and everything but just pulled up at the end uh, with the winner man bro this guy's work rate is insane insane like he's running till you know 95th minute he's still sprinting he's yeah. still running so yeah he, even though like he does you know maybe he is suffering from some some fatigue yeah. uh, you know he has been playing. He's been playing pretty much every game. If you think about it, he's been undroppable yeah. in a way. Um, but we're better off every time he plays, man. He, he's and he, come on, man. How smart was it to target Aitnori, bro? How smart was that to be like, this guy's hurt. Let me go after him. That was a that was a a big game player move, you know. Yeah. Um, his link up play was decent. He always has that. He ate a yellow. Sure, you know. I thought it was an okay foul, but you know, so I don't really have an issue with that yellow. But uh, yeah, man he won the game for us so even this might seem a little bit low but i don't want to give too much uh to that goal because also deflection so deflection. I'll, give seven, I'll give him a seven and a half seven and a half out of ten if that was a bruno penalty you would have probably given it a nine <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i think that is completely fair because yeah he did get the winning goal but it and the presence of mind everything was amazing but yeah it was a deflection at the end of the day so uh seven and a half i think that's fair enough and then moving on just to the subs uh your boy Martial um, wasted a couple of chances, but uh, I know you're not going to talk about. I don't know if you're going to talk no, about no, it that or not. No, we'll talk about it. We'll but, talk but, about it but. Uh, but Luke Shaw, 
like you also mentioned, um, I think uh, he provided more of a threat even going forward, and defensively he looked more capable than uh, exactly uh, Telus. So for let's talk about Shaw to start off with, man. So Shaw did amazing coming on at halftime. I thought he really um, did the job that Telus wasn't being able to do. He was able to handle whoever he was able to handle. Um, uh, Traoré uh, won all his duels. Won, you know, was big in the air as well. I thought he was great, man. I thought he was great. I'll give him a seven out of ten, even though he only played a half. The and biggest problem Tom, is like with Bayi as well, like injuries for sure. If you can have him play a consistent season, you can actually see his talent there. Like, uh, I don't think he's the best fullback going uh, like in the league, but uh, he's actually a really good player. But you, we don't see his potential because of the injuries. He's honestly, you know, he, he's been he's been pretty lucky with injuries, uh, you know, in the in the last season or two. And also part of it is having that competition, right? I think Luke Shaw and most and most of all players will benefit from having someone there that can compete for their spot and it sort of it keeps them on yeah. their toes and i think that's why we're seeing yeah. this version with this version of shaw where he knows that tellers is there and tellers is a you know he, he, he he's a senior level player he's not he's not someone coming from the academy he's not a young guy like brandon williams no he's he, he's he's a finished product in a way right yeah so he knows that his job is on the line if he doesn't play well and i think shaw's been keeping him out of the team so credit to shaw man um seven out of ten and then yeah you know me man i have a soft spot for tony yes he had a few chances that he could have done better but I just think he carries the ball, but also you have to factor in that, um, you know, he wasn't playing in his natural position, which is, I guess, number nine, where he likes to think his natural position is. But, hey, man, it's just, it, our, I, I find our, our, our build-up play is better um, with Tony on the, on the field sometimes. You know, he just, he just has such, if there's one part of his game that's consistently improved, it's his movement. And I just wish his finishing could catch up with it because I think he'd be crazy uh, if it did. But um, yeah, man, no complaints about his game. I'll give a six and a half. Six and a half out of ten for Martial. And then uh, Solskjaer. One thing I'll give him, I've been a big critique of Solskjaer, but one thing I'd give him for sure in this game is that he rotated the players, uh, which is vital. And he didn't do this last season, but he's learning on the job. Uh, and, uh, you know, you could tell today that he's uh, he learned from his mistake. He did, man. I think, I think you know, he... he... He got his team selection pretty pretty on point today. Yeah, but, you know, uh, he was, he was let down. He was let down maybe by a few players. Like, I think Tellus was something that didn't really work out for him. But uh, you know, I thought I thought it was I thought it was good. I don't want to give him too much uh, credit for this one game, but uh, I also do want to give him credit though. So I'm gonna for the fact that you know out of that Christmas fixture list, bro, he played six games, one four draw two. That's pretty solid, man. Up to second with the game in hand as well. So I was gonna give. Ole a seven and a half, but just because of how well he's navigated the Christmas uh, fixture list, I'll give him an eight. An eight out of ten for Soul Shy. I uh, just one thing about that. Um, uh, I don't know if you saw that, but like uh, they panned the uh, camera at him, like in the 89th, uh, 90th minute, he was like sitting there. Would you like to see him a bit more active, or like you think that just his style, or he, or he will as he gets more experienced? Because someone like I mean, a Ferguson would be on the line and be up his players, like, yo, what the I hell mean, are you doing? Yeah, I, I know, I know that that's a complaint that that that's been made about Ole that you know he's not he's not on the touchline enough. But I mean, is being on the touchline you know directly correlated with your team playing better? Maybe he's confident in the instructions that he's given his players and he trusts them. I mean, he does have that nice guy reputation. But again, we saw Mikel Arteta up and down on the touchline. Didn't do much for him. You know, <laughs> no, see, no, I know we, that. But like, it's we, see, <laughs> we see Fat Frankie on the touchline. Doesn't do much for him. Just keeps his weight down. Yeah, you know? no, but in general, like you see, like Ferguson's done it, Pep, uh, Klopp. Uh, I'm not comparing them. But in general, like yeah. maybe when it's a 0-0, zero, zero, uh, like a manager's presence might be required because the players might just be taking it lightly. Like, you know, just need to. Yeah, I'm with you. And I think I think part of that's going to be like as he, I think, I think. Ole's developed a bit of a nastier edge the longer time he's been yeah. managing. United. He's learning on the job, man. I'm telling you, that's what it is. Like, uh, I still exactly. feel he's not right up there, but you, uh, I can't say anything right now because the uh, result showing that he's second the position. Exactly. He's above Lampard. As, he's as, above as, as my man now. said, it's a results-based business. You know? <laughs> yeah, he's above Lampard. He's, he's above Arteta. He's above uh, Pep Guardiola right now. So I can't really criticize him right now. There are uh, There's a lot of things you can criticize him about, but right now he's doing a really good job uh, despite all that criticism and thing uh, because uh, right now if, uh, if he was in Lampard's position people would be going at him 200 million and uh, that's it right who's the PE oh, yeah. teacher now <laughs> so yeah like I mean only time will tell I still feel there's uh, um, like he, there's a lot of uh, areas to improve but we can discuss that later but my last question to you is is Manchester United in the title race <laughs> 
I'm oh, telling man. you, I'm taking the conservative thing. If they beat Villa and Liverpool, they are in the title race. But you talk yeah, about absolutely. that. If, <laughs> if, 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 they beat, if they beat Villa and Liverpool, then we have to really consider them, you know, contenders at this point yeah. in time. But but you know, because they blow so hot and cold, they blow so hot That's and cold. It. Like the Champions League, they destroyed it in the first half, and then yeah. they destroyed themselves in the second half. Exactly. So can, you know, you know, you 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 know that you know United could very easily just go on a ten game. League One performance run, you know, where yeah. they're where they're drawing like where they yeah. draw like six games, lose yeah. four. It could very yeah. easily happen, and that's why a lot of United fans are on the edge. Like, yes, there are those confidants like bring it on twenty one, but a lot of them have seen this in the last two years that it's been a roller coaster ride. So exactly. take that into consideration, uh, and Liverpool's injuries as well. Uh, they're still doing amazing, but they they do have injuries. Is United in the title race, or are you going to wait? <laughs> I'm going to wait, bro. I'm going to wait. I think I think how they navigate the next two games is going to be big. Uh, against Villa and against Liverpool, you know, if they can handle Villa, if they can take care of uh, Jackie Boy and uh, Al Ghazi and, and and co, and then handle Salah Mane and Bobby, then we can start talking about. You yeah. Know, title One thing they're going on the tra- right track is that they're getting those late winners, which they didn't in yeah. previous years. They're getting that under Oli now, uh, and um, I think that clean sheet will help them. But yes, I think defensively they, there's a lot of work to do. Defensively, they need to improve because you know if they don't improve defensively. Then you know, obviously, I don't think they're a title contenders. So that's that's why I'm hesitant because they need to stop giving up cheap goals. And yeah. the other thing is that when we, whenever we play big teams or teams that, that that like to play expansive football, it always works out, you know, because that suits yeah. United style. That suits United counterattacking style. It's these but games, Wolves. These, and... But when you play smaller teams that sit back, and where United has a tough time breaking them down, that's the issue. You see, Liverpool doesn't have these issues, right? You yeah. see, like title title winning teams don't have these. They win the games against small teams and they win the games against big teams. Big teams. United needs to, United needs to improve on that, and we need to improve at Old Trapper. So these are the things that make me say that we're not title contenders yet. We yeah. might put in a good performance. Like for me, I think a good I think a good run for this season would be if we ended up with a cup or two, and let's say we we, we won the Europa League and finished in the top. I'd say top three, top not even top four. I think that would be a good haul for this season. I'd love for them to win the league. I would absolutely love it, but. I think that there's still work to be done. Yeah, no, 100%. Uh, it's a crazy season. You never know, but I think you got your points spot on. I completely agree with that. Uh, but yeah, I think that wraps up this episode. Thank you so much for joining me and uh, hope to see you soon, man. Sounds good, man. Take care. See you soon.